and welcome to the Seneca County Board of Commissioner meeting. Uh, today's Thursday, October 24th. It's 10 a.m. in the morning. This is our regular board session. And we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, let's just bow our heads for a minute. Yeah. Dear God, we uh, thank you for such a beautiful day. Uh, we thank you for bringing us together uh, to discuss county business. We ask that you look over the meeting and, and guide us with uh, good decisions. Uh, amen. Amen. Hey, roll call. Commissioner Paradiso? Here. Commissioner Shep? Here. Commissioner Franker? Here. So at this time, we'll accept the motion to approve the digital audio recording of our previous board session, Thursday, October 17th. So moved. Second. Okay. Commissioner Franker? Yes. Commissioner Shep? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Uh, it's 10 o'clock. First <laughs> item on the, on the agenda is a bid opening. We have an RFQ for the planning consultant at the Santa County Airport. We're circulating a uh, sign-in sheet. We ask everyone to sign it. And I'll turn this part of the meeting over to Barb, our county administrator. Okay. I only have one opening, and it's from Stan Tech. There's not an engineer's estimate. This is for the planning services at the airport. <coughs> um, we are working towards the master plan update, um, the airport GIS survey update, and the airport layout plan update. Um, so they were requested to provide uh, the information um, according to the uh, DOT FAA circular um, 15, 150. 5100-14E, which is the Architectural Engineering and Planning Consultant Services for Airport Grant Projects. Um, and they did provide the information, um, so we will review that and then we'll have to pick a consultant. So that's pretty much all that, because we just asked for uh, our views. Okay, so. we'll talk more about that uh, in the future, but uh, since Brian, you're here, is there 30 seconds uh, master plan uh, is our choice it's part of our 10-year plan and the, and the commissioners have decided to uh, it was time to have a master plan this is going to take about two years we probably at a, at a minimum it will take two years it's a, a uh, overall planning project for the airport that will look at existing conditions current operations permanent future operations that have to be approved by the FAA and then determine what improvements are needed to meet the needs of the airport going forward over the course of the next 10 to 20 years the, the cost of this whole thing could be 250 to five hundred thousand dollars yeah the, and the, the ones I've seen recently have been in the 400 range so it's, a, it's a big project. Uh, we have FAA funds that will pay for this. Um, it's no secret, over the last 30 plus years, the county's been buying up land around the airport. We've been tearing houses down, taking trees down. One of the things that is required if you want to extend your runway, and that's what we would like to do, we're definitely going to investigate it with the FAA and we have to, a lot of things boxes have to check but we need to have a master plan so this is the next phase and the possibility of extending uh, Seneca County runway and just for, so the public knows those in the room we are a regional airport and in plain English Brian that means we get more money right on an annual basis from the FAA uh, and uh, so that's that's hats off to uh, basically everyone involved with the airport um, because we do have regional status now. And just one other thing, just yeah. was good for the public knowledge, is that this project, although we're talking about potentially $400,000, the FAA would fund that, and their current grants for the next two years are going to be funded at 95%, so you would only have a 5% local match on that. 
Okay, great. That's great. it. That's all good. I have. Any other questions? No, Commissioner. Good. Okay, Lee Wilkinson, Mayor of Tiffin. Okay, Welcome. nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. The floor is yours. Uh, so I did bring some additional handouts for you all, and I didn't email these in. Uh, I just thought we'd take a look at it all together. Okay. So and this is this is regarding the Court Street project. Court Street project, which is going to go forward in 2025. Uh, it's in the budget, and uh, Matt Watson has had this plan drawn up for quite some time, waiting for the right timing mm -hmm. for that to happen, and 2025 is the right time, because in 2026, we're going to be busy with sewer work from uh, South Sandusky Street all the way up to the new sewer facility on Water Street. The, the, yeah, the, the mini plant. Yeah. Is that you, yeah, is that what that's right. It? High rate okay. treatment facility. Okay. Yeah. So on this one, the, on the first page you see the site plan is really hard to read because everything is like really small, but it's all broken down on the next page, like all of those things. Uh, mostly it's uh, reworking the sidewalks uh, so that they match the rest of the downtown streetscape and putting in the decorative uh, street lights. We're not losing anything though, basically it'll stay pretty much the same dimensions <coughs> yes. as the sidewalk goes. Uh, there will be a, a slight expansion so that we can have like ADA compliant sidewalks on the north end, on the north side there. Um, but all of the access drives and everything will stay the same. You, the, the regular person won't notice any difference. Anyone going down Court Street wouldn't notice any difference in the street width or anything like that. So on the next page, which uh, we don't have on the screen for everyone because it's really small, I didn't think it would be visible, but uh, we'll make this available to anybody who wants to see it. I like every single part of the project is broken down and the cost associated with every single part. And me not being an engineer, uh, I don't know like what a lot of these things are, such as subgrade compaction. So I'm sure that that makes a lot of sense to anyone who's involved in construction. But it's, uh, everything is broken down by cost. And to get the total cost down there at the end, which is about $365,492.50, uh, Matt Watson is very particular and detailed in that. It's very thing. accurate. Exactly. So are you, right, as a former <laughs> math teacher? Yeah, we like we know your to work out to the pen. Yeah, we know that, yeah. Good. Now, on the next page, you'll see the breakdown of just parts of that. So it's broken down into two parts. Uh, one part would be like right in front of the Justice Joint or the uh, Joint Justice Center, mm -hmm. and that's mostly the sidewalk there, and then in front of the uh, Prosecutor's Office building. Uh, so in front of the Joint Justice Center, uh, it's broken down further, and the two cars front. That would be the court side. That would court be the court street, street side, side. Mm -hmm. of the justice. Center. Okay, yes. I'm following you. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. And so the total cost for just that side of the uh, court street uh, next to the joint justice center is about $38,441.54. In front of the uh, prosecutor's office billing, the cost is broken down further, similar to the way it was for the joint justice center, and with the total cost being $24,000. $18.08. So what I'm asking, so this is an ask, is that since we have an agreement with the county about the sidewalk surrounding the Joint Justice Center and the Joint Justice Center like, uh, itself, uh, we have a ratio of costs that we have agreed to. So I'm hoping that out of the goodness of your heart and uh, uh, complying with the agreements that we can kind of divide that up the, the way we have before with other projects into like 75 percent and 25 percent. So I'm asking if the commissioners would uh, help out with the cost on that side where the Joint Justice Center is uh, by paying 75 percent of that. That would be 38,000 yeah. or something. So what was that number? I was on the back here. 75% of the 38,445.54. I see here and look at the cost breakdown, though, and it has the sources, it says county commissioners, 52,849. Yeah, we're getting there. Oh, okay. yeah. You can go ahead and jump ahead. No, anyway, keep going. Thanks for the warning. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Spoiler alert. 
Yeah. And then uh, we're also so. asking for the uh, county to help us out with 100% of the cost of the um, property in front of or along the side of the uh, prosecutor's building, which is the $24,018.08. So all together, that would be with 75% of the walk in front. Well, I say I keep saying that in front of the Joint Justice Center, but it's on the Fourth Street side. And the walk on the side of the uh, prosecutor's building comes out to that amount, $52,849.23. So if we could uh, whoops, have a nice working agreement uh, with that, that, that's what we're asking for from the commissioners. That kind of helps us out a lot. So the breakdown is there, as Tyler found out on the last page. With the city of Tiffin being responsible for uh, approximately $112, or $112,643.27, and then the commissioner's share. And we have received already a $50,000 grant from the state's capital fund. Uh, and then we're hoping to also receive a National Machinery Foundation grant of 75000 and a Messick Frost grant of 75000 to kind of help out with that. So those aren't locked up yet? Those are not locked up yet. Uh, if those do not get locked up, then the city will bear the costs associated with like whatever we don't get there. <coughs> so, so the city costs could go up to as high as uh, what we have here, 112643 plus 150000 so I didn't add those together. Where there's a proposed archway, what, how's that going to read or what's that going to say? Uh, so that is not part of the cost that's in here, but that's something that could be added later. Um, and it was discussed Did whether or not. Huh? Did you see this? Yeah. Not the money part. Okay. Keep going. Sorry. I'm just okay. Uh, so there could be an archway. Uh, built into the entrance to Court Street there, and it could, uh, mm -hmm. like, we can discuss together, like, how we want that to look. Uh, either all iron uh, with some lights, <coughs> or some uh, brick columns with the uh, arch above that, um, but that's something that could be added later on, so it's not figured in the cost here, because it wasn't required for this project. Okay. So, yeah, I like. I'm gonna go. Out, I like to put walk that. Mm -hmm. Well, you you have handicap compliant listed. The, the sidewalk's handicap compliant now, right? No. Mm -hmm. So we built that. Not going, going up. Ish. Ish. No. Going so up the, to the and that's a positive. Right. Mm -hmm. Like in my thinking, that would be mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. a, a, a. There's one step up. A click mm -hmm. mark on your side, so, so we can bring this up to oh. handicap. So. Anytime city sidewalks get redone, they're required by law to make them handicap accessible at this point. So we put we built this um, as only what how old is the courthouse? Well, 2018, but the that sidewalk there, there. The sidewalk and the, the sidewalk along the court street and the sidewalk from the justice center is handicap compliant. The curb is not. Yeah, so, so that's this is towards Washington. Yeah, I got it. <coughs> Is that oh, because the storage court is that no, because the yeah, curbs too? But I mean, on here where he has it marked, mm -hmm. is that he doesn't have it up by the courthouse mark. He has it away from the courthouse. Okay. okay. Well, we we'll have to walk yeah, it there. You'll see. There's a curb there that uh, right, I see it. that you have to go from the street to the sidewalk mm -hmm. on Court Street there. On the prosecutor's side, that is already handicapped. That's. That's flat with the. That's a decorative, basically a cosmetic change. Yes. Really. Mm -hmm. yeah. Put the pavers in, the lights. Yes. Okay. When I was on city council, I remember when Matt was working on these plans, and there was <coughs> two or three different variations. There was one that was still going to allow <coughs> traffic to go through to head that direction, and then there was also talk of strictly having it be a pedestrian alleyway, kind of like Cherry Alley. <coughs> so, trip won't impede on traffic. We'll still have parking, drop off, and. Don't have, have parking one way traffic just like it is yeah. now. Okay. You could close it for there was events. There, there was right. Talks. Just the same as it is now because it's closed periodically for events that happens for the third Thursdays. They have the market days down there sometimes. Okay. Yeah. The only conversation we had during building the Justice Center 
was the Sally Port area. That that can't be really closed off during court times. And that's what the prison is. Right. Usually they close that off during uh, either late Thursday evening when right. the Friday court's closed. Or I don't think they close it off during business day. No, no not during business yeah. hours. Evenings so uh, or on Saturdays. Evenings or holidays or whatever. Yeah. The commissioner's question was my thinking. I, I thought for a minute you were going to close the street at some point, maybe for the weekend or something like that. Or, But for sure during daily business hours it's going to be open. It'll be open during daily business hours. And then if there's a weekend festival, then things like that, we okay. would ask permission for. Then they'd have to get a permit from the city, right? Well, okay. Any more questions? Oh, I think it's, uh, can you give, can you give us a little? Uh, well, we have uh, absolutely we're public comment. So yeah, uh, the project won't start until after. Um, well, hopefully when we get coordinated with the community kitchen that runs up to that corner of. Jefferson and uh, Fort Street. Uh, we don't want to get in the way of the other projects being completed there. So it'll be 2025, uh, springtime, May, June, 2025. Okay. We are. Uh, we have a. We will take public comment in a second. We have uh, our capital priorities. Mm -hmm. This isn't on the list, so we'll have to talk about it we'll okay. over there and then we'll, let you, we'll get back to you super so right now we'll open it. it's okay maybe the question might be for you sure. public comment if anybody wants to speak mr brightball why are we would you explain something to me why are we pouring all this money in court street that is a side street it is a side street but currently it's not ada compliant and um to bring that up to code we thought that doing the extra work while we're doing that to make it match the rest of the downtown it is a beautification project basically on a side street on a side street which connects uh jefferson which also has been streetscaped uh, a couple of years ago and washington street so just to jefferson street's a main street mm -hmm. so is washington is. street right yeah i mean you know it's a point and then to an hour Just a comment. Okay. Just a comment. I'm just not sure we should be doing what we're doing. Thank you. Okay. Well done. Okay. So my interest would be to look at uh, the ADA compliance piece and guesstimate what that would cost to bring that up. The difference would be the beautification piece. And, and, and we would have a, we have to have a discussion after that. We, uh, commissioners, at this point in the project, probably are not grant eligible for anything in this, right? You already got the block grant, the 50,000 block grant. Right. Meaning ADA grants, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, plus, you're ready to start at 2025. would be spring. 2025, yes. when the weather breaks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. If, if Matt drew this up or Engineer Watson, I'm sure it was done very detailed and accurately, and I'm sure it was done well. Uh, are you guys open or opposed to tackling half the project and doing one side and maybe the other side the next year if we break it up into two years? Is that an option? Well, the only problem with that is then you have to call the contractor back in, and then there's probably extra costs involved. And it's, it's usually cheaper when you're doing a project like this to get it all done at one time. Okay. We're good. All right, thanks. Yeah, thank, thank you for coming in. Sure. Uh, good. Okay, Debbie, come on up. So we have Debbie Schultz here with Nurse Honor Guard. Welcome. Thank you. Seneca County. Yes. And uh, you, you have the floor. So, um, Thank you for everybody uh, you, and the commissioners for actually having me here today to talk about this. Um, we have just developed, and we, I mean nurses in, there's five counties, um, and it is Seneca County, Sandusky County, um, Ottawa County, Erie County, and Heron County have developed um, we are the North Ohio, Lake Erie, 
um, nurse honor guard group. So um, Northwest Ohio was already taken. Um, but it's a program that actually has been making its way from the West Coast across the country. And um, what it is, is actually a group of nurses similar to um, the military. What we do is at the time of a nurse's death, we go in and we perform a ceremony um, for that nurse and their family. So what we do is it's called the Nightingale Tribute and that's usually at their funeral or their memorial service and as I said it's very similar to the military tribute and what it does is it officially releases the nurse from her call of duty. Um, the nurse honor guard we actually dress in traditional whites and I can say after 42 years of nursing it's been a long time since I've been in traditional whites, um, but it's, um, you know, very honoring and very fitting to go back to those whites. And we also, um, to complete our uniform, are wearing our caps that we graduated with, and we wear the Florence Nightingale cape. And, um, the ceremony usually lasts about 10 minutes at the funeral home. What we try to do um, is we will set out, send out um, the funeral home actually has the information and give the family um, a chance to fill in information about that nurse and what, what was her career throughout, like throughout the um, years that she worked. Where did she work? What were her favorite areas to work? And we would touch upon that. Um, and then we would recite um, the Nightingale Tribute. And we would lay out um, a white rose. And that would either be um, in the casket or with um, next to the urn. Um, and that symbolizes the nurse's dedication to the nursing profession. Um, after the Nightingale Tribute is recited, a chime um, is rung after roll call. So what we do is we call the honor call or the roll call of all the nurses present in the room. We have nurses that are in the audience also stand up and we, we do a roll call. Once we get everybody that's standing in the room, we then call um, the um, deceased nurse's name and we'll ring a chime after her name and we do that three times and at the third chime um, we then release her officially from her nursing duties letting her know that um, the nurses remaining are going to step in and take over those duties for her. Um, at the conclusion of the ceremony, we then present um, the nursing gale lamp, um, which is lit at the beginning of the ceremony um, and extinguished, and then we present the family um, with the rose, the lamp, and um, any condolences at that part. <coughs> so we are, we are very new. We are in our infancy stage. Um, we just began in June, June 14th to be exact. Yeah. Um, one, of our co one of our very close co-workers from the hospital in Fremont passed away. Um, actually a special significance to me because she's my brother-in-law's mother <laughs> but I actually met her first through working with her um, and so the nurses all decided because Brenda Baker who is the founder of um, this specific group you know this group of nurses um, um, got everybody together and decided that, you know, we were not going to let this opportunity pass by. So things moved very quickly. They actually did the ceremony. 
But what we're working through now are all the business ends of forming mm -hmm. a group, a nonprofit group. So um, we're we're getting our funding set up. Um, we're looking actually um, developing our web page. Um, we had we have to send in to the state of Ohio through the nursing board to get our seal for um, our nursing seal for our, our specific group um, and get that approved so the the pamphlets that, or you know that you have here in front of you and I, I can give a few out um, so that you guys can at least see what they look like. Um, so, um, unfortunately, you know, we're, we have to have our seal approved. So, and if we do not have our seal approved yet, so we haven't been able to get our stationery together or our business envelopes or our business cards. Um, so those are things that we're working on and we're also we also um, are very grateful for any donations that we receive actually some of the tributes that we have done because we actually since June have done 12 tributes to the nurse you know nurses in this area and you know several of the families have made contributions um, to us because we do have to buy the lamps, the roses, mm -hmm. um, um, all those things in order to present them to the families. So, um, but it is some, as I said, something new, wanting to make Seneca County and the surrounding counties aware of it and that you know for me this is this is a very special project you know for being a nurse for 42 years this is something i truly cherish it humbles me um it's a privilege to honor people who've dedicated their lives to taking care of others and sometimes you know it's at the expense of taking care of our own families or taking care of ourselves so um, I can't think of a more fitting way to um, send sends a, a nurse off. So, um, so yes, very new to the area, but available. Um, and once I, once we get, you know, our website and the cards and everything, what I intend to do, um, I'm planning on visiting the funeral homes in the area um, and I'm willing to meet if this is something that you know any of the groups that you have um, if this is something that you think that they might be interested in I actually am more than willing to come and talk about that um, with anybody who's willing to listen because I'm I'm actually very proud of what we do. Um, we actually need more nurses. Um, it's it's one of those things that um, I think we're finding that retired nurses and part-time nurses, this will fit better into their schedule. Um, because when we started in June, um, we were doing tributes approximately two every week and then it's kind of slowed down so um, so you can be very busy you know it can be very busy all at once and then it can be very slow um, so yeah. that that's you know that that's the part of the cycle of life but um, yes so that's that's what I'm here for today. Wanted to present you with that information. Does anybody have any questions in regards to? Angel, yes. Jim, I see that your 501c3 is pending. Yes, I think that we actually, I think we actually have approval on that now. Okay. Well, I think once it is approved, you should. Things are going to move a little faster. Well, you should come back and 
let everybody know that. Oh, okay. Let me out. Drop, I drop some things off. Okay. Yeah, we get your cards and everything. Yes, and absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I I can absolutely. Anybody else in there? Yeah. Yeah. What counties do you cover? So we cover Seneca, Sandusky, Ottawa, Huron, and Erie. Those are we we cover five counties. So, um, and believe it or not, Northwest Ohio is covered. Like Wyandotte County actually got a, a head start on us, <laughs> and that's how actually Brenda found out about it. Um, her best friend was part of the Wyandotte program, and and her best friend said to her, "Hey, I think there's something that you would really be interested." Come see, and then Brenda says, "I cried through the whole thing, and I didn't even know her." And she's like, "Are you crazy? How, how can I not be a part of that?" So um, that's that's actually how we, you know, got our start even thinking about it. And then, as I said, with the passing away of one of our coworkers that we worked with for many, 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 many years, um, you know, we. We had to send a tribute out for her, so. Anybody else have a question? Thank you get everything. Anybody up here? Thanks for your hard work. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, this is, thank you. Thank did you. not know about this. Can picture with the picture? Yeah, yeah, we could. Sure. <laughs> I don't know if our picture will help you or hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> so we hope it helps. <laughs> Very, very, very nice. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Okay, we're going to jump into commissioner reports. Flip the coin. Go ahead, Bill. Okay. Yep. Uh, Monday had our uh, uh, family and children first council meeting. Um, kind of going over budget for next year and uh, uh, doing some uh, transition stuff, looking through that uh, with Job and Family Services. Um, Tuesday had uh, OSU Extension Advisory Committee and uh, they all gave their updates and it's just amazing all the work that they do out there and doing a great job from Presley and then Katie with the 4-H program and stuff. It's uh, year round, everybody thinks 4-H is just fair time. Yeah, regular meeting. Yeah, the regular meeting. Yep, yep. So then uh, that's nice. they're working on kind of what they're uh, looking for for the needs and stuff for their uh, out to the AT building and stuff on that. So they're working kind of for their requests, what they need for offices and uh, with that. and. Uh, and uh, yesterday, uh, went down to the bridge dedication uh, for uh, to dedicate the rich and uh, to dedicate the bridge into rich folks' uh, name. And uh, uh, great to see the turnout. What a fantastic turnout there yesterday. And you know, from the original dedication, it was about 70 degrees warmer than what it was the last time it got dedicated. To <laughs> the when that new bridge was done there, so uh, same amount of wind, but just a lot different uh, temperature and stuff with it. And Tyler did a nice job. Uh, uh, doing his presentation for the commissioners along with everybody else that uh, uh, did it, Mayor Wilkinson and, and uh, Mont, uh, Aaron Mons and stuff with it. So yeah, great, great turnout for that. So what I got. Good. All right. Word of the week, spend budgets. Uh, it's budget month or months, <laughs> plural. So we've been going over those here. Um, everything's on the table. So we've got uh, this much money to work with, this much in requests. Uh, as people have seen, sales tax of plateaued, I guess you could say, or slightly dipped, so we're going line item through line item, checking things, figuring out needs versus wants. Um, we've got a lot of big projects coming down the pipeline, insurance has gone up, so we're, we're doing the best we can with the money we have, so that'd be the word of the week. Um, we had a meeting this week, uh, this will be an old business, but just to highlight on it, JFS, um, going over foster care um, requests. Um, I think that CCAO, which is the County Commissioners Association of Ohio, recognizes it's been an issue for a lot of counties, so foster care costs are going up, so we're, something we're going to have to address, but I think we had some really good internal conversations, kind of some different directions we might be able to go or some outside-of-the-box thinking, so 
looking forward to hopefully tackling that or coming up with a good resolution. Also this week I attended the Ignite 419 event over at Stacy's Place over in Faustoria. Uh, kudos to FEDC and to the Faustoria Chamber. They put on a really good event. I would say there's probably a little over 100 people there. What would you say, Sherry, give or take? Uh, that was around 90. Oh, 90. Okay. 90. Yeah, close. I, I was close. Yep. My numbers are a little off. Um, <laughs> really good event. They had some speakers there to help small businesses and to uh, uh, resources, kind of helping uh, to figure out what your strengths are, your weaknesses. They had a really good panel. I was able to make it for half the day, but it was an all-day event. Just want to give kudos to Renee and uh, Jocelyn and their team. It's great to get those kind of people together, network, ask experts the questions and stuff. And it wasn't just Seneca County. It was a pretty good regional event. There was people from other counties, and they cast a pretty broad net. So thank you to them. Is there for some follow-up to that? Isn't this an ongoing kind of a thing? Or I believe so. The one? I was there for the first half of the day and come back the second half. But I think they're going to work with some of these people and try to help facilitate their whatever step they're at yeah. in their business uh, quest or venture. But just, it's, it's really nice to get those people out of the woodwork, identify them, what stage are they at. It's just um, they're doing a lot of good things over there on that side of the county. Um, as uh, Commissioner Franker alluded to, we had the Rich Folk Bridge Dedication, very well attended. A lot of people that are in the crowd here today seen there at the event, but um, we had a proclamation. Um, I kind of went off cuff when I gave my speech because I know the family personally. Rich actually had a lot to do with the original bridge being built when he was younger and had his construction company um, just lived a good life of public service served on council with him he was the president and CEO of TSEP uh, council president he was in the military a Hall of Fame athlete just really good guy that cared about the community I think it was a good dedication on behalf of rich folks so um, I was happy to be there and speak on behalf of that um, later today I have a design committee meeting at four o'clock also at the same time um, Stein Hospice, June Aesthetics, and the Glow Company have a ribbon cutting here on Washington Street. So I'm going to try to see if I can do portions of both. I don't know if one of you guys are able to make it or cover, but um, yeah. plenty going on today. And it was a, it was a good week. So thank you. Good. Last night we had uh, League of Women Voter Candidate Night. Uh, Brent's in the back. Bustock and myself were there. There were uh, six of us. Um, Nice event, uh, so I want to thank the League of Women Voters for putting that on. They, they put some time into it, um, and uh, there was a series of there was an opening statement, closing statement, a series of questions. Uh, Mark Zimmerman was there, uh, the sheriff was there, and that was there from the treasurer's office. Uh, Stephanie uh, was there, clerk of courts, Brent and I. Uh, so that, that was a nice event, and the mayor was there asking questions. Uh, tough questions, I might add. So, thank you for those hard questions. Did you win the debate? And, uh, <laughs> so we, we got out of there okay, right? It, it didn't go too bad. So that, that's that's really all I'm going to say. In addition to what everybody else said, uh, one comment on the budget: uh, we're starting to get serious uh, with the budget, um, and you know, reality starting to set in a little bit. You know, when your revenue is flat. You take in the same amount of money every year, and then your insurance goes up two hundred fifty thousand. And you want to look around at possible raises. You want to look around at, you know, um, all these surprises. Uh, you know, you're starting to get into it. We're starting to get into some tough decisions. So we're not sure how this is going to play out. But the one thing's for sure, absolutely for sure, we can't spend more money than we have. So uh, the auditor the budget commission certified the amount of money our budget has to be that or less um, and that's our job so it's, we've got to do our work and we're working on it and we're trying to um, but, you know for my chair I don't know how you guys feel but then as we get further into this I can I'm starting to see where we're going to have to make some cuts mm -hmm. you know and you know, so we're not in panic or anything like that but we have to just we just have to stay within what we have. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Okay. So I'll continue with the financial information that you guys so graciously love. It's always um, about that. <laughs> um, I do have sales tax um, that was collected in the month of October. Uh, we collected just over $981,000, um, which is up from the previous month. 
um, just over $7,800, $7,900, I'm sorry, um, and up uh, from the previous year, almost $22,000. But year to date, year to date, um, we are 3.4 percent below our target. So uh, that number <coughs> seems to be steady, um, but we're still not collecting where we should be at collection for sales tax. <coughs> and again, that's a majority of our budget. Yeah. Well, it's nice we did continue the trend downward. Correct. October. Correct. We've had two. We've had Positive. two previous months that have been downward, and now we're in an upswing. Hopefully, that lasts for the rest of the year, but we will wait to see. Um, and I don't know. We've talked about this before with the 10-day sales tax holiday. I'm not sure if that money is included in this. Um, I have never given any indication of any kind of calculation or anything like that. So I don't know if they just went on previous years and... Would the auditor's office know? I, I believe there should have been something out from the state that mm. said this is how they calculated or this is how they came up with the amount. Um, I would have received that when I received the, the, the amounts. So I'm not sure. It might be a question that I may be able to ask um, the organization, CCAO, may, may have an idea of what uh, transpired there. Good. Or it may come in as an additional revenue. Mm -hmm. There's the state pretty much does whatever they want to do. So <laughs> it's their money to return to us, but it's their decision mm -hmm. to make. Um, so then um, on a couple other notes, I had um, uh, Morgan Metzger, um, the administrator for Soil and Water, uh, reached out to me and um, has a request um, from the Ohio Department of Agriculture. They're hiring an H2O position um, and is looking for some office space to house an one employee. Um, they reached out to her to see if we would have space available. Um, and she doesn't want to be in the middle, so you know, obviously she talked <coughs> to me. So I have the information for the gentleman. Um, I believe it is uh, Rob Hamilton is the manager. Um, so I will reach out to him um, and see, just kind of see what what they're looking for space-wise, um, and see if we can maybe come up with and an agreement. Is the, the egg, is the egg building a possibility? Sure. Well, that's exactly well yeah. That's where they would have wanted to have that. So there is, because, you know, SCAT used to have an office in there. Correct, that, so correct. There is space. space but just um, and then that. if it would be an on, if it would be ongoing space. Right. So yeah. that's kind of, you know, um, for, for the, it, it would work into, we have to work it into the AT project, that renovation, if, if it's going to be an gonna ongoing. Be yeah. So um, they are we are hoping that maybe um, that we could have agreements finalized by Thanksgiving. So about a month. So I will reach out to him. So you're, you're on it. I will reach out to him and see what see what they're there looking for. Room. And do they do they get a lot oh, of traffic yeah, there's, there's room out there. We're just looking for down the road. Yeah, just to make sure. Yeah, we have enough space if That's when we you, when we yeah. move from that ag building to the AT Thank building, the new ag building. Yeah. Right. So I don't want to displace Matt somebody Rogers, if we've got, you know, be some, yeah. So and, plan and for it. speaking of that renovation at the AT, um, we have requested from the departments out there, um, Soil and Water and um, the OSU, OSU um, for their requirements or their suggestions of what they need um, to get that to the architect so we can finish that renovation portion. Okay. They might want to have one or two extra offices. Yeah, I mean, that's part of it. Yeah, right, right, yeah, right, right. but I just want to make sure that, you know, we have their their needs met and then if there's additional space that they would need, so. Um, well, I, I do have some good news. So um, I would like to contract, congratulate the Village of Republic. Um, they received a grant in the amount of $1,500 from the Gilmore Foundation to install a new glide slide with a 60 inch deck at the, their community park. I would like to say thank you to FEDC. Um, they were the ones that uh, procured that and you know did the grant writing. So um, just we're helping every community in the county. So 
and I appreciate nice all know. of their help. So. Yeah. So the public knows the commissioners and engaged <laughs> FEDC. We pay them for our grant writing, and um, evidently here the public took advantage of that. They had an idea; they needed some help in writing a grant. Uh, if you've never written a grant, or what do you do, right? And it could be expensive to find somebody to write the grant. In this case, we provided that service, no charge for the public, and they got the grant. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, nice. Kudos to FEDC for mm -hmm. helping helping nope. out with yeah. that. So, and uh, you know, nice. the Village of, of Republic, you know, reaching out to them, saying, "Hey, we do have a need. Can you help us?" So, yeah. it's great. It's working. It's working. Yep. yep. It's the way it's supposed to. Right. You know. That's else? all I have right now. The old business. Um, yeah, I would like to discuss the Job and Family Services um, Foster Care request that they asked okay. for that five hundred thousand dollars. Just want to, you know. Put it on record again that we're, you know, we're having this discussion, um, and you know where we go from here. So, um, you guys want to add anything to that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we evaluate again. It gets back to, you know, yeah, we have we've gotten we've gotten some information, mm -hmm. and I mean, from what I've been told, you know, we we've got a couple of kids that you know need some high level care and. Uh, it requires some extra money that may or may not be reimbursed from the state. Time out for the public, if we may. Uh, we, we try to do this so we can inform the public. Um, <coughs> all throughout the state of Ohio, all 88 counties, uh, the county commissioners are having this discussion. We get emails um, uh, from our association and, and from various counties how can you guys help us? How can we control this? How can we help us? So there was one email. Was it Huron County? Yeah. Uh, the county commissioners had to pay $750,000 for one family, to take care of one family. And that's our uh, obligation by law. So if Job and Family Services comes in and says we need a million two to take care of these kids, kids. Uh, we have 39 in the system. We have to find the money for them. And we don't budget that in the budget. So those are the kind of things that you, know, you just got to always be ready for. In this case, there's a $500,000 request. And I don't think should even say it like this, but we feel like that's a low number compared to what a lot of counties are getting. But that's a lot of money to us. And, um, so before we approve it, right. we're asking millions of questions. What are we doing? We're trying to educate ourselves. It's complex, right? Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. guys agree? Yeah. Um, I, I, like yeah, I like the idea of bringing Mayor Child to the table. Uh, it, is, it is partially mental health. Get the judge involved. I mean, I think if we put our heads together, there's some good ideas discussed the other day. Maybe we go in regionally with some other counties to have that. I mean, we're all having the same problem. If we can kind of pull our resources, um, I just think these costs per kid or per family, I mean, it's just. And, and, we have that, and, and so when it gets to job and family services, we can, we can have them come in sometime maybe and, and talk. Mm -hmm. I think it might be good to keep it declassified. But mm -hmm. uh, when job and family services gets these, I'm calling them kids, um, they're not in foster homes. They're not with parents. They're, they're taken out of, away from parents and they're put somewhere to get away from all of that. And so um, and there are various ages, various degrees of need. And so we have kids all over the place. We have to pay it. So that's enough for that. But back to you, um, are we are we in a position to uh, move on this? I think um, I think there was a little bit more discussion Wait, that I would like to have go. with Kathy and a little bit more information from Kathy. Back to us. So yeah, it may be brought up again, um, just so. That, but I just wanted, you know, we I, there was a discussion with Kathy and, and Steve out of JFS, you know, that you know we we need a little bit more information and in, you know how how do we. How do we try to circum? No, I don't want to circumvent, but how do we? How do we try to work around them coming and asking for half a million dollars? Another half. Yeah. Another half. 
adopted yeah. their budget to get them through yes. the end of the year. This is kind of like, you know. Yes, and this is just to get them through the end of the year. It, I mean, and then it starts all over again next year. So we're trying to, you know, not get not get year. that blow in October or you know even in August when they ask you give to you know yeah say, I just how I, do I, I want the public to know these are the kind of surprises we get sometimes and it's when you have a 21 or 22 million dollar budget and you get hit up at the end of the year for half a million it stings and like mm -hmm. we it, we're mandated to do uh, it yeah we are mandated by the state to do we it it's do it. it's required so mm -hmm. if it if yeah, we have yeah. to give it to them it means you know we got to cut from somewhere else so. Okay. I guess Good. on my end, I'll say this is one commissioner, but the frustrating part is the state's getting out of that sort of service. Back, I don't know, years and decades ago, there was help and homes for these kids. And now as they try to hand it over to the private sector, they can kind of charge whatever they want. And our hands are tight, so we're forced to make sure these kids have the care they need, the housing, the translators, the you name it. I mean, the costs really add up, and it's, it, it's the taxpayer. Okay, that's good. And uh, you know, we'll take one more thing for the public. We'll kind of work towards a uh, conclusion. Um, we, uh, it's the mindset of the commissioners to ask a lot of questions. So we have, we have a new county administrator. I'm, I've been here the longest five plus years, not even two, two years. Well, you're second, finishing four. COVID was in all that mess. But what we're doing is we're looking at all our leases. We're looking at every time somebody wants to buy a car, what, you know, schedule. How many cars do you have? How many miles do you have? What's your policy? How many are you going to need next year? You know, why do you need this one? Right? Mm -hmm. We're pulling out contracts. We're looking at all our leases. Um, we really, we just ask a lot of questions. So sometimes it may appear that um, we were, you know, wishy washy or whatever. That's not the case at all. We're actually, um, want to be really educated before we make the decision, and I think I think it's really helped us as a as a group get better. Um, Shane, I think you would agree. Um, you're up front, doing a lot of things. You're always looking things up for us, and, uh, and sometimes there's resolutions that were passed way back that prior commissioner did. We don't know really knows anything about it. We have to go back and look them up and and kind of connect dots. So uh, it, it's been good. Uh, and this is one of those scenarios where we just want to learn a lot more about job and family services and how they function. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So it's been very interesting. Do you want to add to that? Nope. Yeah. Very well. Yeah. We're on mm -hmm. the same page there. Okay. New business. New business. Well, I have a couple of supplemental appropriations. These are all out of general fund. Um, I have foreign judges for one thousand uh, dollars. This is to pay the visiting judges. Um, that we have. There are very few, why but they call it foreign judges. Right. I don't know. I don't know why. I, I don't know. I don't know why the the account title is foreign judges, but it is. Um, but it's to pay visiting judges when uh, one of our judges either has to recuse themselves yeah. or you know foreign we have to, they're they're on vacation or they're out or whatever. We have to get a visiting judge. Um, and then the others I have are services for the jail um, in the amount of $70,000 and contract services in the amount of $80,000. And those both are for um, to pay the utilities for the remainder of the year um, for the county. And, and so here's $150,000 surprise at the end of the year for utilities. And you would think we would at least look the year before, added some. It's our utilities. It's 150. Well, more. everybody knows the cost of utilities are so going up, so that's how kind do you of plan for that. Uh, and we're working on trying to get the utility bills down, right, John? New lighting, new controls, new everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, wow, I think they're going up faster than the trend of us <laughs> pushing them down. Okay, so we need a motion. I'll make a motion. We approve supplemental appropriations. Is red. Second. Oh, sorry. Right. Well. Okay, good. I'm going to take Mr. Franker. Okay, any and more discussion? We good? Roll call. Commissioner Franker? Yes. Commissioner Chef? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. <clears throat> and then I have a few resolutions. Um, resolution appointing Brian Rannigan to the co uh, County Law Library Resource Board. Um, this is a five year, I believe it's a five year term beginning January 1 of 25. Motion to approve the resolution, please. Uh, second. Okay, roll call. 
Mr. Franker? Yes. Commissioner Chef? Yes. Mr. Paradiso? Yes. Uh, resolution appoint reappointing uh, Mitch Blondie to Mitchell Blondie to the Seneca Tiffin Seneca Public Library Board of Trustees. Um, his term will begin January one and will expire it on December thirty first of twenty twenty. I'm sorry, twenty thirty one, which is a seven year term. So move. Second. Roll call. Mr. Franker. Yes. Mr. Chef. Yes. Mr. Paradiso. Yes. Seven-year term, you don't usually hear of many of them. No. I thought the same. No, I because I had to look it up, too, because I was like, <laughs> mm, should it be seven years? But yes, that's that what I got. Um, resolution authorizing the emergency man management services contract with the Seneca County Local Emergency Planning Commission for 2025 on behalf of the Seneca County Emergency Management Agency. So moved. Second. I thought we we, we talked about this five times now. I, I think we've talked about it. Um, yes. Um, so didn't we do this? Before? John Spar was in a couple weeks ago when we talked about getting our mitigation plan in line, yeah. getting all that contract. Um, this is kind of a portion of it. We so we provide twenty five thousand dollars to them for uh, services to take care of our. Did we we signed it and everything? We're just. I thought we did this, but I'm no. Good this with, I'm is a, good this with is it. something new. We had to do the other things first, and now we'll sign this. Okay, so it's part of it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. This is the final. I think signature. this is the final signature for all of that. Right. <laughs> okay, I got it. No problem. So okay. Do we have a first? Do we have a first? Yes. And second. Okay. Yes. Roll Commissioner call. Franker. Yes. Commissioner Chef. Yes. Commissioner Paradiso. Yes. <clears throat> And the last I have is a resolution awarding D2 Excavating LLC, the CDBG payment year 24, City of Fostoria, ADA compliance and site updates project. Motion to approve the resolution, please. No second. Great. Roll call. Commissioner Franker? Yes. Commissioner Schuff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Nice. That is all I have, gentlemen. Okay, is anybody? Up here, you have anything to add before we go to public comments? So, okay, well, at this point, we'll open the floor to public comments. Anyone can speak. Uh, please, please state your name and then go from there. My name is James Klein. I reside at 172 East Van Meter Drive in Eden Township. I own the board of the Sunny County Board of Elections, and I want you to know that we are working very hard to stay within our budget. Yeah, good. We are handling 300 early voters a day. And we are, the board members are coming in and helping out. We hired Deb Wilkerson to come in and work with us. And I would implore you to please come down and see what's going on and help out. Uh, I think that you would get the better vision of what's going on down here. We have 35,900 registered voters in South Dakota. We expect 75% of them to vote this year. Wow. We've been very busy. And at 300 a day, if uh, these people down there who are well-trained and they, we've got a great staff, they don't even have time to go to the bathroom. So. Get an opportunity, stop down, see what's going on, help out, answer the phone, uh, whatever you can. It's good people are turning out to vote early. Thanks. It's, it's, it's amazing. Mm. I go down on Tuesdays from 10 to 2, and I, it's, it's a wow. You're tired when you get home. <laughs> yes, I am. I don't have that much. I, unlike you guys, yeah. I don't have that kind of gas in my tank at all. <laughs> So, well, thank you for everything. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Breidenbaugh. My name's Tom Breidenbaugh. I just have a issue with Court Street. Okay. My issue is the courthouse is new, and I'm sure everything on Court Street is in compliance with stuff. Well, I can see no reason for anybody to ask you for more money for anything in Court Street. There's a lot of places in this city that need help. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. 
Anything from T Sentinel? Anything new? Nothing. Okay. <coughs> Good. Gentlemen. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I'm Adam Beck, uh, and a couple of gentlemen know me here. We work for a company called Vision R&D. Okay. Uh, we're hey. a developer, owner, and operator of renewable energy, renewable natural gas projects. Uh, we're working on a project, to, uh, building a project to use and uh, upgrade the gas that, that comes from the central landfill and turn it into uh, renewable natural gas. So we're here today just to introduce ourselves, introduce the project. So we'll build a gas processing plant on the landfill property that will take and uh, divert the gas that goes to the flare right now and uh, treat the gas and then uh, turn it into pipeline quality gas. It'll flow through a, a short low pressure pipeline and then enter the transmission line that's already there uh, a couple miles north of the landfill property where then it can reach end users through the gas uh, transmission system. So uh, the project, once we're built, will employ up to 11 full-time employees there. Uh, the, the plan will be there and operate for you know, 20 or more years. Uh, uh, one way to think about it is um, even if the landfill never received another ton of waste, the, the waste in place there will keep producing gas for 30 years. Uh, and, and we're simply taking gas that's going up in a flare right now, upgrading it, and turn it into a, a usable energy form of fuel so uh, it'll really ad advance you know a landfill that's already pretty technologically advanced with the, the plant and the, the treating equipment that's already there uh, really reduce almost eliminate emissions there but, um, because of taking taking it away from the flare upgrading it and then putting it out into the natural gas system will you guys be on the landfill property or just a spinch north or is it it'll be on the landfill property on the, okay uh, so you construct the plant now? Are you, are you in operation yet? Yep. Earthworks in progress right okay. now, kind of in completion actually, and then most of the rest of the construction yeah. will happen next year. Foundation and the camp will be left for work. That will all happen next year. Good. Thanks for yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? You good? You guys all together? Yeah. All right. About the whole team in. Thank you for coming. Thanks. Anybody else? Okay, so we're. Uh, on regular schedule? Yes. Sir. Meeting next Thursday, 10 o'clock. Uh, meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>